But everything came together in 1971, the first Grand Slam since 1950. Edwards to Barry John. This is Arthur Lewis on the scissors. Big powerful centre. Again, Edwards to Barry John. John Williams in the line. Out the door. There's a great chance here for Gerald Davies. I think he's going to make it. Denzel, did he or didn't he? Barry John with a drop goal again. And Wales have won another great victory over England. 22 points to six. After England, a classic match against Scotland. John Dawes, again Williams in the line. He's over the 25, into John Taylor. What a magnificent move! If the Scottish match was one of the all-time greats, then the Irish was certainly one of the hardest. There's a chance here, Barry John to Edward. Williams in the line, he's got Lewis there. Gerald Davis is outside him. This is Gerald Davis. Davis for a goal. Then on to Paris for the Grand Slam. France 5, Wales 9. The front, right over the top to Christian Carré, to Spangero, Claude Spangero. Fly half Barrow, this is Bertrand. Scrum half, Max Barrow. Villepreux, he's got Gouverel outside. That's Gouverel now inside. Elusive running this. Barry John tackling once again. Williams on the interception. John Williams up the line. He's got five people inside him. Inside of his helmet, Temple Williams. Gareth Edwards on the outside. He must score. And then... Uh, it's as if it all comes together. There's been the development tour to Argentina with John Dawes, and a flurry of players suddenly emerge. And this time, they're not steel workers and coal miners and railway men and dockers. They are the sons of steel workers. They are the sons of coal miners. Uh, in J.P.R. Williams' case, he's the doctor who's the son of a doctor. But he's the exception in some senses that proves the rule. Uh, J.P.R. Williams at fullback suddenly comes out of London. Well, so what a rock to have in your team. A man who scores in every game he plays against him, but of course tries. This is a, a new phenomenon. And later on with his hair, of course, the band flowing down, somebody said, my God, he looks like Jesus. And of course, he walked on the water for many of us. And then around him, Gerald Davis, son of a coal miner. Gerald Davis should look like an Edwardian throwback with his little moustache, small, skinny little body. But a man who could stop on a sixpence, who could take off from either direction. A great tackler. Again, a great thinking rugby player. And that, I think, is the key to it. Barry John, son of a coal miner. A, a person who had intellectualised what he was going to do. And his great mentor, of course, being Carwin James. Barry played in a different dimension of time and space from other rugby players. Um, he succeeded Di Watkins. What a succession. He would be succeeded by Phil Bennett. It's as if, at this point, nothing could go wrong. And at the heart of all of this was Gareth Edwards. And if you think of one name to say that sums up a century of Welsh rugby, pace, passion, power, Gareth is that word. Uh, it's no disgrace to any other rugby player who's played for Wales to say that Gareth Edwards stands head and shoulders above them all. Because he did, I think, for two decades, uh, epitomise all of the best traditions that had been in the Welsh game and that would come out of the Welsh game. And of course, uh, from Gwenka Girwen himself, out of the heart of that coalfield tradition. Probably the most memorable moment in Gareth Edwards' career didn't come in a Welsh jersey, but in that match, that try, the Barbarians All Blacks, 1973. Chased by Alistair Scull. Brilliant! Oh, that's brilliant! John Williams, Brian Williams, pulling. John Dawes, great dummy. It's David, Tom David, the halfway line, brilliant by Quinnell. This is Gareth Edwards, a dramatic start. Let's go! Nineteen seventy-five saw yet another championship. Buffelli, Edwards, in fact, gathering it. Bevan to Gravel. Gravel trying to run outside. Bertrand, Fenwick to Gerald Davis, cutting beautifully inside, up to the French 25. Support from Mervyn Davis. Can he make the line? Cobner's going to get there. He's 
five, Derek Quinnell, caught there by Nigel Horton. Fed out again to John Bevan. Bevan looking for support inside, gets it from Evans. Evans gives it to Alan Martin. There's a chance of a try here for Gravel. And it could be a try for Fenwick. Bobby Windsor feeds to Edwards, looking for the gap, almost racing through, he does. He's going to get there. And 1976, the Grand Slam. Oh, and it's a score there. What a tragedy for the English, but what a bit of quick thinking by Gareth Edwards. It really all looked so simple. You can see how the ball stuck there, and Gareth Edwards, who needs no second invitation, was over in a second with that great strength of his. Oh, a great scrummage thrust by England, nonetheless, from Irvin Davis to Edwards to Bennett to Fenwick. They've missed out. John Williams, the fullback. JJ, this is John Williams now. Can John Williams score his third try against England? Yes, he can. Scotland scrummage under all kinds of pressure now as Edwards from a heel against the head by Windsor. Inside to Merwin Davis. Terry Cobner feeds. Trevor Evans, Fenwick, caught by McGeehan, but manages to turn. That's John Williams in there, working as a mauling forward. Fed out again from Windsor. This is Edwards. Edwards now. He's done it again. Wells, 15 metres out. If they can win it, which they have, they're in a fine attacking position. Bennett, the overlap, JPR Williams, out to Gerald Davis. He must score in the corner. Jeff Wheel driving through. Again, good possession. Edwards. Bit of space there, and Edwards, will he get that record try? Has he got it? It's given. And the moment has come. Gareth Edwards with his 18th try, his fifth in five consecutive matches to create a new Welsh try scoring record. Mervyn Davies, the captain, palms to Edwards. Bennett getting a lovely service now. Gravel bouncing off that tackle. It could be another try for Wales. Bennett, Bennett going himself. Oh, brilliant dummy to seal it surely for Wales. That was a fabulous try. Windsor throws, Mervyn Davis palms, Price on the field, the tackle by Reeve, Price lays it back beautifully. Now it's out to Edwards, the feed there to Gravel, to John Williams, the fullback. Another tremendous tackle by Reeve. Fed out from Alan Martin, Edwards, Gravel once again. This is out to Phil Bennett, there's a chance here for Fenwick, JJ Williams must score. This Welsh team now allied an amazing array of talent at half-back and in the backs with an incredibly powerful and well-knit pack, especially in the front row. And of course, uh, from Pont de Pool will come Bobby Windsor, will come Charlie Faulkner, will come Graham Price, uh, the Viet Taf, um, the hard men, if you like, of, of Gwent rugby, giving the ball to these young, mostly West William, geniuses uh, behind them. It's hard to tell you how much this warmed uh, Welsh crowds in the 1970s because, again, it's as if so many of the factors in Welsh life, uh, population factors, social and economic, were being seen, were being brought to fruition uh, by these young men in ways that are similar to the ways in which perhaps film actors um, do elsewhere or maybe soccer stars in Brazil. It was a game once more identifiable with all facets of Welsh life. Any team would miss a player of Gareth's stature, but the replacement, Terry Holmes, was a worthy successor. So it proved in the 1979 Championship. Holmes tackled by Lambie. This is JPR Williams. JPR, can it be a try for Elgin Rees? A brilliant bit of following up and the try has been given. On the line there, to Elgin Reese on the 22. Fenwick once again, the switch there to Dave Richards. Richards with JJ Williams outside him, over the 22. JJ Williams, and he's going to score. No bother. Just whatever in holding their own ball. 
Set for one against the head. Davis out to Griffiths. Griffiths. Griffiths off the Napoli. How can he get the touch? Can Elgin Reese get there? It would be a remarkable try, and he's made it. They won a triple crown in 1979 with new halfbacks, Terry Holmes, with Gareth Davis, and uh, a lot of new players. And I gain years the start of an early era in many ways. But the game was getting a little bit more difficult for Wales now than it had been. Certainly, in the advent of coaching, the other countries had certainly caught up. The 1970s was an incredible decade in Welsh life, not just in Welsh rugby. The strikes, the coal miners' strikes of 72 and 74 that knocked governments down. The way in which Wales itself was developing a, a different kind of national confidence shuddered in 79 with the no vote against the assembly and maybe again not just coincidence that it was the last time a Welsh team would do really well for almost a decade through the 80s. I wouldn't want to make too much of it but by the time you get into the 1980s you see Wales going again into an economic slough of despond and the 84-85 strike remember closed essentially the Welsh coal industry which itself had really been the backbone of Welsh rugby closed it down forever.